Okay, well, let's all stand. Let's all get ready for our song this morning. Please have a seat. We're very thankful. Now we're going to have the church news. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the services of Bong Dog Baptist Church of Sunny. We're glad that you're all here for your announcements today. Uh, we will get going. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we want you guys to like and share our Bong Dog Baptist Church Facebook video every Sunday when we go live on our church stream. We're streaming live right now to so many folks all around the world who are watching service with us. So if sometime today you would get on, like that video and share it. And for the folks that are watching with us online, if you're outside of Bangkok or you know people outside of Bangkok, please share that video and join with us every Sunday at the same time right here for our services live on Facebook. If you're in Bangkok, come on in. We're open. There are many folks here today who are here for services. And so we'd like you to come and join with us if you're in Bangkok and you'd like to come to services. When you do come, and thank you for those that are here continuing to help us observe social distancing, we'll ask that people wear a mask and we'll check your temperature when you come in and people have been spread out just a little bit this morning. So please be diligent in that. Help us maintain the social distance protocols, the wearing of the mask, the um, getting the alcohol gel when you come in, all those kinds of things that in our new normal life we have to do every time we go in and out of some place. So also, please don't forget to check in when you come in in the morning check in uh, on the Titana app and out when you leave as well. Thank you very much for helping us with that. 
Uh, we want to encourage our church family, be the example in your workplace this week, in your neighborhoods, anywhere you go. Be an example in word and conduct, in love, in spirit, in, spirit, in faith, and in purity. So please be a light shining in your world. We're going to be reading the Bible together this week, uh, the book of Mark, chapters 13 through 19. So if you're keeping up with our Bible reading, chapters 13 through 19, we'll be reading this week, all right? Let's be praying together for a few specific things. We have many new members, and we're so grateful for that. Uh, but please be praying for these new members to grow in the Lord. They're excited, and they're coming, they're, they're learning about the Lord. Just pray for that excitement to continue with them and that they continue to grow in their walk with Jesus. Then please pray for friends and family who don't know Christ. Uh, every week we talk with folks who are witnessing different people, have friends, have family who need to know the Lord. So let's be praying for each other that we are able to be a witness and that folks will accept Christ in our friends and family group. Also, please pray for the safe recovery for those who are suffering from the coronavirus. Um, I heard about a friend in the States this week who came down with it. So uh, all over the world, people are struggling for this. So please just be diligent in praying for that. Uh, our missionaries, of course, who are still trying to return to Thailand, I hope you're praying for them every day. Uh, we need them here. We need the help, and we need uh, them to be able to be here serving the Lord where he's called them to be. And so uh, please be praying that God would... Uh, roll out the path for them to get back into Thailand. And then we hope you're praying every day for personal opportunities to share Christ. Wherever you go, if you go to the grocery store, you go to a restaurant, if you're even just walking down the street or taking public transportation somewhere, hope you're taking time to pass out a track, invite someone to church, or just share with somebody your story, how you got saved and what God has meant in your life. But seek out those opportunities, look for them, and, and make those personal opportunities count when sharing the gospel. All right. Hope you're prepared to give of your offerings this morning. Luke chapter 12, verse 34 says, For your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And God's given us so much, and we hope that you're prepared to give back to the Lord of your tithes and offerings. You can do this online at the Bangjok Baptist Church uh, Kung Thai bank account, and that number will be on your screen. And if you'd like to give to the offerings at the end of service, please do that. Even if you'd like to bring it in throughout the week, that's okay. But please be faithful in the giving of your tithes and offerings, your giving to missions. Um, we're so thankful for those of you who are. Thank you for that. Hope that you'll join with us this morning for the book of Hebrews at 10. We do have that on Zoom, and so if, if you have friends who would like to join in with us on Zoom, please let them know they can do that. And if you need the link to the Zoom meeting, uh, please let me know. I'll get, make sure that you get that and that you can send it out so people can join with us online. But we hope that you'll stay and study with us through the book of Hebrews. That class will be right across the street this morning. Our children's classes are going. Please pray for them today from 9.30 to 10.30. We have kids coming back, and so pray that uh, if the kids don't know the Lord, that they'll get saved. And if they do, that they'll uh, continue to grow in their walk with Christ. Also, please pray for the teachers that work with them, uh, that the Lord will use them and that they'll be effective in that. Our English classes have started back up on Zoom. And so if you know someone who would like to be involved with that, please let me know, and we will get you a Zoom link for, so that they can come and attend classes. We had a new student this last Friday come and he was so excited and uh, I told him, I said, hey, now listen, every time that we have English class, we do this for free, but we ask that you just watch a Bible presentation at the end. He said, I can do that. And so I sent him the YouTube link and he watched it and uh, we're just praying that God's word will work in their hearts and lives. And so uh, please pray for him and please pray for the other students who are coming back uh, to that English class. All right. Join us next week for our sermon titled, Luck vs. God's Will. What's the difference? How to know? All these questions will be answered. Luck vs. God's Will. And uh, we hope that you'll come back and be with us next week for that. That's our church news for today. Thank you so much for being here. We're excited about today. We know that God's going to move in a special way, and we pray it's in your heart. Thank you. Good morning. I'm really glad that everybody's able to join with us this Sunday morning. It's so good to get back here and to be able to worship once again. You know, in the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about connecting with the Lord. We've been discussing how we can walk together with the Lord. As we discuss that, we understand that God has a plan for our life. And the plan for God, uh, for our life from God, is that we grow in the Lord. And so this is what the Lord wants from us, is for us to grow with Him. Last week, we are discussing about how God leads us, how God speaks to us. And so we were discussing about in the Old Testament, how God has spoken to us in the Old Testament, how God has spoken to us verbally in the Old Testament. 
when we're talking about Moses, how God had spoken to Moses, what God wanted to do, how God had spoken to the people through dreams, as we're talking about Joseph and what God wanted Joseph to do and understand for in the future what was going to be happening to him. The Lord spoken to us through angels. We talked about Joshua, how the Lord has spoken to Joshua through an angel, how God had spoken to Mary through angels. But in today's time, how the Lord speaks to us is through the Holy Spirit. And we, and we talked about that, that, about that last week, how each and every person, once they have prayed, once they have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, they receive the Holy Spirit. Now, as we're walking along in life, and, and God has spoken to us, there's one thing that we need to do and it's the one thing that we can't stand. It's the one thing that is the hardest thing for us to do. And that is to be silent. You know, I counted the 30 before I spoke again. And there's this uncomfortable feeling, like there's something that should be done. There's, there's a feeling that we should have said something. We live in a time where people don't know how to be silent. They don't know how to be still. We have the world coming around us and it's almost like a gigantic wave coming off the beach, and they come one at a time. Doesn't matter where you're at, what you're doing, whether you're at work, whether you're riding your bicycle, whether you're on the monorail. We had people that talk on the phone when they're riding on a motorcycle. But people are always having to be doing something, to be listening to something, to be active. See, the Lord tells us in the scriptures in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. He says, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let us all the earth keep silence before him. In this silence in which they're talking about here, it's talking about this is not a time to be talking. It's not a time to giving off our ideas or what we think is the right thing to do. But this time right now is to be in silence before the Lord and to worship Him. It's hard to be talking and listening at the same time. I have noticed, for the most part, people want to be busy. They want every day of their life to be busy if they're not talking with their friends and they're, they're listening to something or they're watching something on their cell phones or they're playing a game to the point that people are only focusing half of their attention on any one thing at a time. So when we look at that, how does God talk to us? If we're not taking time to focus on the Lord, how can God get across what he needs from us? and how that we can grow in the Lord. Look at the book of Luke. Uh, let, let's look at Psalms first. Psalms chapter 37, verse 7. It says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. It says, Rest in the Lord. When it talks about resting in the Lord, what it's talking about right there is to be still, is to be calm, is to focus on what God is wanting from us. And it says, and to wait patiently for us. And that's a hard thing for people to do. As people are busy all the time and they're constantly thinking and they're having a hard time to focus on any one given thing from the Lord. But God said, this is what is needed for us. The Bible says that we are to focus on Christ. And as we focus on Christ, that means that we have to change what we're doing in our life to just give some time for only God. 
This happens all the time. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, there's a story about the family of Lazarus. Now, this is the first time that Jesus meets Lazarus and his family. And in the family there, there are two sisters, Mary and Martha. And as they were coming there, they're all getting ready. And you're going to see exactly what we're talking about. We're going to have two different people that's going to show two different aspects of following God. And let's look at this in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. It says here, now it came to pass that they went, that they entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost not thou, thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. You know, as, as you remember this, you, you remember that Lazarus was the one that had died and Jesus had rose him from the dead. And so this was a great miracle in that family. And we understand that that family was very close to Lord Jesus Christ. But this is the first one. This is the first time that they had met together. Now, when you look at Mary and Martha, two sisters, Martha was a type A personality. Martha was the one that she was always doing. It says that they were coming to Martha's house and, and she had to get everything ready because there was a new prophet that was coming to her house. And she was cleaning, she was cooking, she was making sure that everything was going to be just right for her. Okay? And so there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being busy. And there's nothing wrong with getting the work done and making sure everything is just right. But the problem is that there's a feeling that sometimes we're not doing enough. We feel like we always have to say something or we have to plan something. And then we're not being productive. And if we're not being productive, then we're wasting our time. And you have Mary. And when you have Mary there, and Mary comes, and the Bible says that she sits at the feet of Jesus. And the scripture talks about it. It talks about how Mary had chosen the better part. What was the better part? The better part was to listen to Christ. The better part was to take time out and focus on the Lord. You know, we have to take time just to get away and to separate ourselves and say, this is a time that I have with the Lord. There's a time that we have to get away from all of our distractions and to calm our life down that we can spend time with God. A couple of weeks ago, I'd walked out of my office and we'd walk, I'd walked into the backyard and I, I was, had got done, uh, got some business done here and I'm getting ready to, to study for this class that I had to get ready. And I needed to wrap my head around the teaching of it. And so I got out of the office and I walked over to our backyard. And we got a small backyard. And then I thought, you know, this is a real calm place. I look at the grass and the trees and everything like here. And, I, and as I was looking at it, I was saying, man, this is calm. I can think. And then it dawned on me that the main reason why we don't have peace in our life is because we don't take time out to be quiet with the Lord. I am the most calm person I know. Well, it's actually a lie. Okay. There are some mornings that Tammy will say, you need to go out of the house. She runs me out of the house. Why? Because she needs some quiet time. 
I'm the type of person, when I go on vacation, I schedule every hour of every day so we can pack in as much as we can because everybody understands that vacation is to do all the things that you can't do while you're working. And so that when we come back home, we're exhausted. I love that. I love to be busy. But even for myself, I need to have time to quiet down my soul. I need to have time to quiet down my heart and my mind, to get away from all the noise that's around me, and really to see and hear what the Lord has for me. You know, the scripture tells us that we need to be quiet. We need to be still. We need to calm down our heartbeat and quit our racing heart and, and just to calm down and to focus on the Lord. Now, the book of Psalms, chapter 46, verse 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. It says to be still and know that I am God. After we're running around and we're doing this and we're doing that and we don't spend our time to focus on God. And if we think it's a modern problem, think about 2,000 years ago. It was the same problem that Martha and Mary had. Jesus had came to the home of Martha and Mary and Lazarus, but Mary was content to be still and to listen to Christ. But Martha couldn't do that. Martha had to be busy. In the words of the New Testament, it says, you have become distracted and upset at many things. You know, if we're not careful, even come to church, we can get so busy in the workings of the church that we don't focus on the worship of the church. And Sunday becomes another time of being busy. To me... I think one of the most amazing inventions at all time is a cell phone. Now, I, I like the Apple phone. Other people like different types of phone. They like Androids or other phones there. And that's okay. But to me, the, the phone is like a mini computer. Now, on my phone, I have over 50 books that I have saved on my phone. I have four different types of Bible apps on my phone. I have over 6,444 emails on my phone. I have over 4,000 photos on my phone. And the most amazing part about this is every day you have to charge it up. And if you don't charge it up, it dies. And then it becomes of no use. Well, our spiritual life is the same way. We go and we go without any time to recharge our batteries. And in the end, we're of no use. We die out. We burn out. And we need to be recharged. It's necessary to find a quiet time with the Lord every day. If we're going to be victorious in this thing called life, we got to spend time recharging our spiritual batteries. But how do we do that? How do we be still and focus on God? First off, we make a time to meet with God. Just like you're going to meet with your friend or you have an appointment with your friend or you have an appointment at a business, you set a time and you set a place to meet with the Lord. Okay? So it might be in the morning, you wake up in the morning, you have already got it set down there at 7.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, you're going to have your quiet time. You're going to spend time with the Lord. That's the reason why they call it a quiet time. So we write that down. Secondly, this is very important, you need to choose a place. 
Now, you choose a place where you can get away from all distractions. It might be in your home. It might be in a park. It might be somewhere near to nature. It might be on the roof of your building if you're in an apartment. It might be in just a quiet room. But some place where you're not distracted. Thirdly, what you have to do is to cut out all distractions. Now, it'll take practice. But the first thing we got to do is to cut off our cell phone. And it's going to be hard in the very beginning, but then you'll realize five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day, the world will go on. We shut off our cell phone. I had to go to the embassy here a while back, and I was talking to the people as we're going into the embassy. The man says, okay, you got to shut off your cell phone. I said, I've never shut off my cell phone. I don't know how to do it. You know, that's something. But we need to shut it off. We need to put it away. We need to go someplace where we're not going to be distracted. A quiet place. A place where we can be with the Lord. And then you, what you do next is that you take a book of the Bible to read. You pick one book of the Bible. And you don't rush it. Now what I say is you take a book of the Bible. So, so say that you're reading the book of John. Or you're reading the book of Genesis or Leviticus or anything. But you read that whole book all the way through. So in your daily devotions, you're reading that one book all the way through. So you read it chapter by chapter. Now, the most important thing is we don't rush. I've noticed sometimes my mind wanders. And I'll read a book of the Bible. I might read a a chapter of the Bible. And then I think, what did that just tell me? And And I think, if I can't remember what I just read... I go back and I read it again until my heart is calming down enough that I'm focusing on what God has said. One thing that's been really good for me as I do my personal Bible study is as I read the chapter, I type it out or I write it out again. So as I would say, say John chapter 1, verse 1, and, and you read it and what it says, and then you write it in your own words, and that helps, it, helps me to remember more about what God is telling me. And then, once we do that, we read it, we take time to pray, and to talk to the Lord about what we've read. Now, what I do is I follow Acts. Adoration, thanking the Lord for all that he's done, praising God for who he is. Confession, confessing my sins. Thanksgiving, thanking the Lord for all that he has provided for me and what he has done for me, and supplication, acts. And that's in supplication means that we just ask from God the needs that we have or the needs of our friends, and we pray for our friends like this. I guarantee that if you'll try this for one week every day, you'll hear from God a little clearer, and your walk with the Lord will be stronger each and every day. The question that we are asking ourselves, can we hear God speaking? Or all the noise from the world crashing in on us? Let's focus on the Lord this week. And at the end of seven days of trying these things of what I just discussed, let's see how God has worked in our heart and changes our life. There might be someone here today as you're listening, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior. You've been to church, you've listened to the preaching, you might know the stories, but you don't have a relationship with the Lord. All you have to do is accept that you're a sinner, accept that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, ask Christ to forgive you of your sins, and come into your heart and to be your Savior. The Bible says that once you do that, you're automatically adopted into the family of God. Maybe there's some people here that's gotten away from God. It's been a couple of, it's been a hard couple of months. Well, it's time to get back with the Lord. And so all we have to do is to spend more time with God, allow God to work in our hearts, and he'll mold us, and he'll lead us in the direction we need to go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your blessing, all that you've done for us. Father, guide us and direct us. Lord, help us to be still. 
Help us to hear from you. And Father, I understand that all of us need that. So Lord, just touch our hearts. Help us to follow you better still. And we ask this all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless.